It was when I got into real estate six years ago, I said, I'm gonna use all my social media knowledge I've gained and help evolve and improve the marketing and branding of real estate. Since that day, I've been doing nothing but trying to do that. And I'm seeing real estate agents worldwide now change their social media strategies up, seeing them brand themselves, seeing them not just try to sell, but more so trying to grow that local celebrity ambiance around them and have people know, like, okay, that's the person to go to. But like, I made that happen. That's so cool. Here we go. On a road, here we go, here we go. What's going on, guys? Jared Dyke is here. I uh, just wanted to touch base on the Quantum Leap event that Think is putting on August 9th and 10th in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. We are doing this event virtually and in person. It's called Quantum Leap, which is basically Gary Keller's autobiography of how he built a billion dollar empire. Forget about listings for a second. Forget about buyers for a second or inbound leads. This is going to allow you to look within yourself, your business, and how you can get to the next level using the systems, tools, and models that Gary Keller has already laid out for the real estate industry. I can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the ThinkPod. My name is Jared Dykus. I'm here today with a very special guest, someone that I met in 2017 um, in the beginning of his real estate journey, uh, the famous Ed Stolak. Uh, real estate influencer. Uh, how are you doing, Ed? Beautiful. Thanks for having me on. Nice to reconnect after all these years. I know, man. So let's take it back to 2017. Uh, what were you doing You know, when we first met? I, I remember you were involved in the founders community, uh, obviously very entrepreneurial. Can you, you just let our audience know, you know a little bit more about your background and maybe how you got started? The... The early stages, the foundation, was working at places like Founders, working with entities and other entrepreneurs that were all about branding, social media, just becoming very, let's say, trying to aim for the public figure status. Mm -hmm. We were all trying to push for something bigger. And I was always helping those people out with their social media, helping them with their brand, helping them build that until one point, and it was pretty much when the time we met, was when I said, let me focus on my brand for once. Let me mm -hmm. focus on who I am as a person. I've learned so much and I've helped out all these people with their brands. Pretty sure I can replicate it and do it a little bit differently and more uniquely with myself. So let me dive in. So for the longest time, the foundation was just helping entrepreneurs, helping businesses, helping entities, helping individual influencers, some celebrities as well. You know, there was, um, there was Gerard, there was, um, you know, Kevin, uh, Kevin Jonas. We were working with a few people. And I learned so much from them. But that's, again, when I said, let me just do my own thing for the first time ever. Um, but social media has been in my background for quite some time now, since 2012, wow. honestly. So I've been doing Instagram and social media, just having fun uh, ever since then. So And now I'm in real estate. Yeah, so I've been in real estate for about five, six years now. And it's a blast, got to say. It's a fun time. Would you say that you you were doing social media before you before real estate then, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. That's the true foundation to who I am as a I guess the character I am today was Insta it started in 2012. Graduated high school, got onto Instagram because it was the thing to do back then. So I dove in and realized, wow, this is actually a platform that one can benefit from uh, financially, benefit with, with exposure, uh, build a brand, build a business, get sales, marketing, advertising, brand exposure. Like this is, I need to take advantage of this. Since 2012, I've been trying to dissect Instagram and social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. So, but Instagram and TikTok have been my, I guess, my uh, specialties. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, what, when did the realization happen that, okay, I could go into real estate, like you could have sold anything, you know, with influence on social media. Why do you think you, you decided to go into real estate? For really the looks and the money, I could say, <laughs> you know, being very transparent here. I like, I saw some other people in this business and they were all suited up. They were very professionally well-dressed. Mm -hmm. Uh, they looked the part. They had nice cars. They had. They were making all this money from what social media portrayed them to be <laughs> making money. 
And so I said, let me give it a shot. Let me try it out. Um, doesn't hurt to learn about real estate. I mean, I don't learn this stuff in school. And it's something that we're all going to be a part of one day, whether we like it or not. We have to buy a house. We have to rent. We have to learn that part of life. Mm-hmm. So let me figure it out. And then I started realizing all these entrepreneurs that I'm following, all of them own real estate. All these people are claiming real estate to be one of their biggest reasons to why they are so successful today. I'm thinking, man, I got to get into this thing. So it was really the money in the looks. Yeah. That's funny, man. And and what what kept you going though? Because it can't just be money in the looks made you keep on going for five or six years, right? I mean, was there anything? Right. Was there was there something that you know? Because don't uh, I could be wrong, but I believe you have your own team now, correct? I do. I do. So, so. It, it, it's a little bit even more about you, it, it, less about you. I would say at this point, where you know you're potentially I don't I don't know your team but maybe helping the newest agent or you know you're in a different position it's not only about how do, how do I make money but it's how do I help the agents on my team you know make money and, and have the same successes as, as, as I do so tell me about that transition at what year did you start going from you know just focusing on you to maybe succeeding through others it was, it was 20 2020 is when I oh wow when I got a project in a lifetime, all right, so the project came from Instagram. They reached out to me. They said that there's a 180-unit building that they need represented. And so when I dove into it, um, I realized, oh, I can't do this by myself. I, I, I definitely need a team to help me back this up. Like, mm-hmm. there's 180 units that I need to walk through. I need to sell. I need to wow. and advertise. What was this in it. North Jersey? This is in Somerville, New Jersey. So, wow. Yeah, I guess they can say Central North. Yeah. Okay. So, and we're still we just actually wrapped up that meet um, that um that project about two three weeks ago. Wow! So Congratulations. About two years to you know, finalize. Thank you. But it was in 2020 when I realized I must get a team together because I can't do this by myself. I was I think I spent 92 hours there a week. And I was, I was sleeping there. I was sleeping at the office. Uh, it, was, wow. it was too much work. It was understanding the blueprints, understanding the, the marketing, the advertising, running everything properly. I was doing the social media because they, of course, wanted me to represent that project because of my social media presence. So Were you I doing transaction coordination like too? Like, were you literally helping them get to the closing table with these? And Oh, like, yeah. Oh, so you yeah, were doing absolutely. it all. It all, everything you can imagine from marketing to branding to the logo design of the building and the project, you know, helping them get the monuments outside, the landscaping. I was doing janitorial work for a little bit, like inside, just to make sure the lobby looks clean. Oh my gosh. Like, like I had to do everything. And it was like, I had to take my real estate hat off and then put on, you know, let me fix this wall real quick. It was the superintendent is not here. So let me make sure it looks right. Like I was doing a lot of things and then I just realized, okay, while I'm doing that stuff, if I have to do that stuff, I need a team to be doing the other stuff. Mm. And that's when the team was born. That is beautiful. So the the team was actually born out of an opportunity that you received on social media, the thing that brought you into the space almost in in the first place. So I love to hear how, um, you know, things kind of went full circle. I'm curious, Ed, where do you see the vision, you know, now for, you know, you have, uh, I think over 50,000 Instagram followers, your engagements like crazy, you're posting fire reels, you know, you're, you're with a great brokerage. It seems like, it seems like you're growing the team. Uh, what's next on the horizon for you, um, in this next stage of your career, if you had to say. It's to continue getting more projects similar to the one that we just closed out. Really? Wow. So that's... Specializing. Wow. And why is that? Is that because of leverage? Is that because of uh, branding opportunities or or exposure? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. It's, it's a combination of those two, but in also in addition to that, it's the fact that no one else is doing that. Yeah. I don't know many other teams or brokerages or, or agents start there. I don't know too many other agents that are um, 
I guess showcasing such a big project in their portfolio. Yeah. So knowing that I have successfully done one already without any sort of experience in the past, they, they these developers literally reached out to me on Instagram and said, "We see what you're doing on social. We feel like you are the demographic of our demographic for this building. We think you can give us the exposure we're looking for, and you can um, relate to them. You're probably going to be a good salesman for that." So that's it. I got in, I dove in, I became a listing agent, I represented the project. And I, I must say before, just before, like maybe a hair before that project, I was ready to like just give up on real no. estate. I wasn't really interested in it. Wow. Yeah. I started, I wasn't getting and you fell in love with the building? Sales. I, oh my God, head over heels. I, I, I love the, the concept and I love the opportunities that the project has brought me. Wow. Within two years, that project helped me not only help move 180 plus families yeah. into the building, I helped change all their lives. Some of them needed to sell their house to move. Some of them <laughs> oh, were no. done with that building to buy. Wow. Some people, dude, God, the craziest story is some, this one couple, the young couple, they were maybe like their late twenties. They came to me on the day of, they were probably like the, maybe, I don't know, 10 people, 10 couple that moved into the building. And they said, listen, um, we have a crazy scenario. Our house just burnt down and we need to like move now. And it's like, like today, like, what can you do? Well, believe it or not, the team and I somehow managed to make it all happen for them to move in the next day, which what? is insane, but we made it happen. Is that just because so, of the relationship no. you had with the building that you were able I to do that? Say so. I mean that in a, I mean that in a so. good way, you, right? You know what I mean? It's like you're coming in as it seems like a full service real estate agency that is going to help with the branding of the building, the image on social. You're you're doing the real estate practitioner aspect of it. You're getting them to the closing table. You're getting people moved in. And it's a great lead generation model because as you touched on, people are sometimes selling another home. They're buying another home. I mean, have you received more inquiries from other projects like similar to this over the past two years? Yes. Wow. Well, the next thing that it brought me. Within two years, it brought me about seven new connections with developers. Oh, my God. And it's a house of this. Are they in New Jersey, new too? Building. They're all in New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, all in New Jersey what? so far. Listen, I took a train the other day from from New Brunswick, New Jersey, uh -huh. to Madison Square Garden, right, to New York. Yeah. Every single stop that I stopped at, there was a brand new building that was being built. No way. Every single stop. Not one stop was there was not a new building. Every single stop had a new building. Wow. So there's a lot of developments more and more that are coming to New Jersey, but not just New Jersey, everywhere. Yeah. Although the rental market has increased like crazy and developers are noticing this. So knowing that this is like such a prime time to go into rental market, but in this sense, like the listing side. Right? Not not the not the thing running around like a you know Crazy man, um, <laughs> going from showing one rental to another, but more so occupying one building that has all these units, yeah, and renting them out that way. It, business, is, it's there's just it's inevitable. It's happening. They come to you. The phone rings every single day. My email, I get about fifteen to twenty inquiries a day. It's ridiculous. Wow. Forced, stuff like this forced me to grow a team. I can't do this by myself. So I'm curious, what, like, what, who's the most important player on your team for a project like this? Besides you, obviously you're the face and you know, you're going to sell the building, but who do you need to surround yourself with, you know, when, when occupying a project like this? It's a team that can essentially two point of me. I'm trying really? to create two point of me no. because if I'm not there, they need to know how I act, how I speak, how I dress, how I welcome people, how I get the deal done, how I create that white glove service, right? Like they need wow. to make sure that they understand how I operate. Who, how many Eds there, do you have right now, would you say? How many pure Eds or Eds in the making? Like, well, I would say solid three or four. Wow. You know? No, that's yeah. powerful, and, man. 
I have one girl, her name is Violet. Um, shout out to Violet. And Violet is like, I want to say my right hand, but also partner when it comes to this stuff because she has such great connections to developers um, in the Philadelphia, New Jersey area. No way. Really? Yeah, she does a lot of commercial lending. So, oh. of course, who comes to her? Developer. That's right. So, she's been building up this database. She knows, so she knows how to speak with them. Yeah. She's been doing this for years now. How did you meet I her? I just dove into this. YouTube. <laughs> no. Get out she of here. She saw one dude. video of mine. I'll tell you the story of that already. She saw, she saw a YouTube video where I said, how to get your New Jersey license, real estate license. I was filming it in my car, driving to an appointment, I think. I looked young, green suit. Like, it was, it was you know, I made a, a video just to post on YouTube. I had, like, 200 views, maybe. And she saw it. And she got inspired to get her license. She reached out to me on Dude. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. She reached out to me everywhere with the same copy and paste message. She got my attention. And so she, I, I got on a call with her, just started talking with her. And then she's like, Ed, I don't know what it is about you, but I'm going to do some sort of business with you. And when she said that, I'm like, okay, this is just one of those crazy people out there. <laughs> and she said, no, 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 Ed, mark my words. Like, we're going to do work together. And then about a year and a half later, she reached out to me. And she said, I think I'm ready to move to New Jersey. Can you help me buy a house? What? Okay. So I helped her buy her first townhouse. She saw how that worked, that whole that whole operation. And then that's when I was just starting this project, Somerville Park, that's what it's called, this 180 unit building. She's like, Ed, I told you we're gonna work together. This is exactly what I want to be doing. Property management, working wow. on projects like this. And I'm like, no way. She got her license, she joined the team, we did a few deals together, and then I brought her into the project. Wow. And since then we've just been hammering it out. We're working on setting up another meeting right now with another developer out in East East Brunswick, New, Jer- uh, New Jersey. That is phenomenal, so, um, man. We got we got to chat. More off, more we got to chat offline about this developer stuff. I have a, a bunch of agent friends in Philly who work with a lot of new construction and and stuff. I'm curious if you know the same people. Um, but well, wow, man. So you you, I mean, what what was your real estate like knowledge or mentor in all of this? Like, how did you learn the industry? Because it's like, you're almost building your own way to play the game through social media. And I respect it. Like, did you have any, like, why did you have any idea of why you put out a video to get people to watch it about their New Jersey license? Or was it kind of just for content? Like. Content. I didn't have any sort of intention. Wow. That video. I figured it would be something that people can see. A lot of people are probably typing that in, how to get your license in New Jersey. So if they type that in, hopefully it'll pop up. Hopefully it'll be another follower. That's all I'm looking at here. But you but didn't even you didn't even look as another business partner. No. Wow. That is phenomenal, man. That's like one of the best stories I heard inside of real estate about how social media <laughs> can lead to it, like I feel like it's so limited inside of real estate. Every agent's like, "Oh, how do I get more seller leads on my Instagram or buyer leads?" Like, what if I told you that you would find the next connection on social media that is going to transform your business way more than one single lead can? You know, a relationship is so much more valuable than a lead. Um, and you know that that's you, a, that's the you opinion. Never of know, it. You never know who's watching. You never know who knows who. And I'll give, you, I'll give you a few more stories for those that are listening also, right? I got a DM once from a, a 13-year-old kid. Hey, I love your content. Like, what the hell do I talk to this kid about? He's, he's, he's <laughs> a buyer, he's a seller. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be a client anytime soon. Uh, so I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll play. I'll bite. He's like, thanks, bro. I, I appreciate it. Whatever I can help you out with, buddy, I'm here. Okay. Oh, wow. And he responds with, oh, that's so cool responded my dad just built seven houses in like plain, you know, plainfield new jersey <laughs> bro <laughs> it's so I'm funny like, to me. With your dad. so i got i got that um listing appointment for the first house i didn't get it though 
but it was the opportunity, right? Yeah. It was the and it's in Plainfield. How, how far away was Plainfield from you? 25 minutes. That's what I'm saying, minutes. dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, it, it, you're, it, that is so mind-blowing to me how micro-geographic sometimes opportunities can actually still be. Um, or even who's around you. Like, I remember growing up, you know, young being like, Oh, no one around me is like reading, think and grow rich or how to win friends and influence people or like any of these books. And then the internet happens. And I realized there's like entrepreneurship meetups and this and that. And like, I'm like, who like so, it, sometimes the internet is like that extra layer of culture. Um, and it, it's just so amazing to me how, uh, someone like yourself who's so grassroots in an industry like real estate can still receive, infinite potential just from just from social i mean it, it's absolutely game changing so uh inside of the real estate business i guess the question that i was trying to ask is who showed you the way inside of you know how to go on a listing appointment how to track your numbers how to you know uh, set up a cr was this like you know knowledge that you were going on youtube university for or was there a mentor that kind of showed you the the practical real estate landscape as well the first few years when i was in real estate i was um a part of a few different agencies part of a little mom and pop shop part of a berkshire hathaway remax different remax and um all these different agencies i was part of like they all had their own ways of teachings and their experience to offer and the previous remax that i was at actually um they Love, love the agency, the, the broker, everyone was so awesome to me. They helped me out. They showed me the ways of how to do it. And I realized it was never done the way I needed it to. And by the time, this was like probably my fourth year into real estate now. So like I learned a little bit at that point. Yeah. I realized what I actually needed to learn. And from there on, I just said, if I want to be taught this way, then I need to teach this way. Mm. So, of course, that's what I started to like dive into more. How do other team leaders do it? How do brokers really manage their brokerage or what it may be? How do people team um, team up and how do they partner up with lenders and mortgage reps yeah. and um, so on and so forth? So, then I realized like all the lessons and education I need are just in the partnerships that I have. And I have a very, I don't know, I have a very 50 cent mentality. Um, <laughs> it said, I never went to Harvard, but the people that worked for me did. Yeah. And, like, that's that's kind of what I'm trying oh to do my here, is surround myself around teammates that know how to do things more better than I do. Yeah. So, like, for example, this Violet girl, she's a oh, pro when it comes to networking, when it comes to management, when it comes to organization, when it comes to delegating, when it comes to, like, structuring everything. And I just look at that stuff. So I know when she comes into this, she's helping out with that side of the, the um, side of that aspect of the team. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's mind blowing how how much um, how fresh it, this conversation is. Just talking to someone like you, because you know, yeah, we're from different brokerages, this, that, the other thing, but you are like you're creating the real estate culture of the next generation real estate agent and you're you're building your team essentially off of your social influence um and your local market is not even is 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 still feeling the effects of what you're doing online so it's like a per a perfect mashup um you know with everything that you've built and i i love the insight about being more of a specialty team and being that full service that can really sell out, you know, a building. Um, I'm curious, Ed, have you ever thought of a, about expansion of that model? Like if you were to, you know, open up its Orbis group, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, so if you were to open up in Scottsdale, is what you're doing so scalable that you could essentially hire the right relationships in Scottsdale and practically do the the same thing with another set of Arizona agents or something like that. Like, have you have you took it that far? And in, in you know, have you gotten inquiry from like Florida, for example, where it made you think, what would it look like if I went into another market? You know, have you guys explored that at all? Excellent question, and that's exactly 
the reason why I joined the brokerage that I'm at with uh, today. So Real Broker allows me to recruit and allows me to grow teams nationwide. I do not have to be licensed in those agents, uh, in those um, uh, states. I don't have to be licensed there, but the people that I recruit, there of course has to be the brokerage. In that yeah. So right now Real Broker, we're expanding. We just went into Canada. We're um, now encroaching all of uh, all the 50 um, plus states in, in uh, America and worldwide eventually so my goal absolutely my goal is to go ahead and grow this model nationwide so when i do happen to get a developer that reaches out to me in dallas texas exactly. like, hey, we want you to do to our building what you just did in jersey and you do that well i might not be able to but the team that i grow out in dallas i can fly over there teach them every week what i gotta do supervise them make sure that it's done the Sulac way, right? The 2.0, I will just scrape it down there and still profit off of it, still benefit from it, and still be a part of that project in that sense. So, knowing that I wasn't able to do that at other brokerages, because yeah. I have to be licensed in those other states, you know, like the following that I have, I want to I want to utilize it as much as I can. So, of course, I'm going to try to recruit. And I am starting to grow my team. I have a team in Kansas now, working in Nevada. Working oh, in wow. California, working on PA, New York recently. So it's starting to expand. But I want to tackle New Jersey development first. Yeah. See how this operates, how it works, get a real feel for it, and then take this and scale it, as you said. What do you think will be the hardest part of that? The biggest roadblock? Is it the relationships in other states? Is it the operations um, and making everything kind of orchestrate? The biggest obstacle I would say is it's going to be not creating enough 2.0s of me because mm. I don't trust anyone to work like me. <laughs> it's very hard for me to trust someone else. So knowing that I can barely work on one project by myself, if I had two projects, just here in Jersey, if I had two projects, like I need to make sure I have yeah. a team that knows how I operate so they can help me manage those two projects. So if mm. I get into a point where I have five projects at the same time, one in Scottsdale, one in Dallas, yeah. two here, and one in New York, like I need to make sure I got a team that can help me manage all that stuff. Because yeah. I don't want all those those teams to come to me and then not have access to me or not know what to do and then throw their hands up in the air. I don't know what to do, Ed. What do I do? Exactly. Like I'm going to overwhelm myself. So. Absolutely. No, I, I love, I, I just love asking that question because I wanted to see where your head's at with all that. And you're, lo you're looking at it so realistic and so practical. Uh, and I mean, and I mean that in a, in a very positive way. Um, Ed, I want to uh, hop into some scenarios with you. I, there were some questions that okay. I was really curious uh, to hear your input on. So would you rather for the next 10 years, Ed, receive 10 one million dollar listings all right so for the next 10 years you receive every year 10 one million dollar listings or for the next 10 years every single licensed realtor in the whole united states over the next 10 years follows you on instagram it's a requirement the national association of realtors came out with it that you have to follow ed stolak on instagram what would you rather have the listings or the uh, potential leverage and influence option two really um yeah I really want the, i want the influence i want the exposure I, why like what well, the exposure comes come all those opportunities that you mentioned in option one yeah they will happen it's inevitable all right the cool. referrals the sphere of influence the people that would be joining my team being recruited being a part of what i have I guess in, in my vision, in my perspective, like they would want to be a part of that. Absolutely. So knowing that I would have access to potentially what, two plus million realtors, yeah. right? However many there are in the country, like I want all their eyeballs on me. Like I want them to make sure they know what Ed's doing. And eventually the projects will happen. The, the developments and the listings and all that stuff will happen. I love that because you got on here talking your shit about money and the looks, yet here you are saying i want to lead you know the next generation of of people you know through my instagram it's amazing to see the growth that you know you've experienced you know just from a mentality standpoint um over the past couple of years that that's a, a great answer to that question so i got another one if you could have a magic wand and wave it over the whole entire real estate industry 
what's one thing that you would change about the industry? And this could be taken in any direction, whatever first comes to mind. Good question. I would say the competition, competition needs to start looking more so in a collaborative sense. Uh, I think too many people are trying to kill each other, whereas opposed to it should be more collaboration. Um, like one of my teammates called an agent yesterday asking about, you know, like, hey, what would be a good offer for your sellers? You know, we want to make sure we draft it up properly. And instead of responding like a human being and how one should respond, right? Like, oh, well, I think you should, you know, offer this and maybe put those terms in there. She said, I don't get it with you new agents. Blah, blah, blah. And she started becoming like this, um, I just, I don't want that. Like, no. for reason, there's no, there's no collaboration in that sense. That's just one aspect, like to the deals. But then the other, like this whole recruitment culture that's happening right yeah. now, this whole of, if you're not on my brokerage, I don't want to work with you or I don't even want to associate myself with you. But if you do work with me, like, hey, you've got my opportunities and we can work together. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want that. Ed, you hit it on the freaking nail. And can I just give you my uh philosophy on why that is i don't know if you know this you probably do but the average real estate agent in america is over 60 years old these people are getting out of the game they're scared like they don't they don't understand the power of the next generation realtor the way that you're changing the game the way that some of these younger you know agents who are winning awards are changing the game and i, I think it, it doesn't come out of anything else of than just being scared about competition. Like uh, it's so crazy with how much homes are being sold. I don't care if it goes under 4 million in the U S this year. And that's a low historic number there. There's still like, someone's going to make the money. Someone's going to make the commission. Why not you? Like you at least have that mentality, you know, rather than being scarce and holding in on every business uh, It just blows my mind because I've had the same experience, you know, getting into this industry where sometimes with people who've been in real estate for 10, 15, 20 years believe just because they, you know, kept on doing their, their continued education, you know, they have this, this anointment from the industry, but realistically, you know, they, everyone was a new agent at one point, right? Everyone had to sell their, their first home. Um, so I, I think that's a great response. I, I, I love your mentality on, um, the culture of the real estate industry. Yeah, the culture needs to change because it's, it's heading in a, a very new direction and, and I'm happy it's evolving. It's, that's the good news. Not always in the best way. So I feel like if I can want to, you know, um, uh, wave that magic wand, it would be more so about changing the culture. That's cool, man. Well, hopefully we can do that together um so the next the next segment is uh truth or trend i'm gonna ask you some trendy topics and just get your perspective on them so social media growth hacking is that a trend like is that even a real thing or is there some truth inside of if you're smart enough you can hack your content or does it really come down to just good content and and that's it that's the kind of the question i'm asking it's we we have um transitioned out of the point of where hacking was actually a thing a few years ago where if you post x amount of times if you if you view this many stories and if you do this if you do that like take advantage of the algorithm like if you did that a few years back then yes instagram social media all these platforms rewarded you like oh cool you did that like here's a little bit more exposure now it's coming down to where so many people understood those hacks and algorithms and were taught them mm-hmm. that now they all think that they're gurus, that they're all teaching this stuff mm-hmm. to everyone. And now social media is starting to say, okay, I think there's a overload of all these coaches and mentors and these gurus and whatever, whatever else. We need to start identifying who the true ones are versus the fake ones. Because mm. now, what are we seeing? We're now seeing a lot of bots and fake accounts and scammers, and it's starting to get a little scary. What's yeah. Going on? What's going on? Getting verified. 
on social media. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as it probably was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Today, it's a little harder because you know, like, why should we verify you? Yeah. Well, there's someone else that's doing whatever it is that you're doing better. Than yeah. So many of you coaches and gurus and God knows what. So I want to say today is super important to be authentic, to make sure that your content is good, is valuable, is entertaining. Because if it's not really any of those two components, then why should you be rewarded? Mm. You know, what gives you the so, right? What gives you the right? Absolutely. So I think we're stepping out of the, um, I think we're definitely stepping out of that world now and stepping into a new world of you got to make sure that your stuff is good because if it's yeah. not, then you're not going to grow. Good time. Good content will win. I like that. Um, let's stay on content real quick. We all remember it. HGTV. Is that ever going to make a serious comeback where for some reason, even the younger generation like us are watching HGTV heavily, like almost selling sunset or something, or is HGTV the old MTV at this point, truth or trend? Um, no, and I, I think it's trending. You think I it's think, trending? Are you just saying that because you have a secret HGTV show coming up <laughs> and I don't know about it yet? I think every time I, I speak with someone, I always, uh, like a buyer, I always refer to the kitchens or the, the interior design. Like, hey, you're trying to go for the HGTV vibe, right? And they're like, yes, exactly. Oh. And I know exactly what they mean. They they see white and bright, the uh, quartz countertops and the white cabinetry yeah. and all that stuff, right? The subway tiles. And like, I always refer to that as the HDTV. Wow. But I I know so many people, though, that still watch HDTV to get their inspiration and motivation to get a house and all that stuff, and they watch it. So wow. I, I, I think it'll, it's still there. I think it's okay, still that's there. a truth then. I like that. That's a good answer. Um, what about influencers getting into real estate? Where do you think this space will go over the next five years? Let's say I have 500,000 Instagram followers but it's because I cut up avocados every day and make smoothies. Do I still have the ability to become a real estate agent and sell homes in this market? I say yes. Because now your ideal client is probably an avocado advocate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? exactly. You might end up selling a house that is just, you know, avocado or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like you're gonna you're gonna find your own little niche though that you're gonna sell to. So you think and influence is really all that matters a, then? Oh yeah, influence is just such a huge component. Like us real estate agents, our goal is to become like the local celebrity mm -hmm. in a sense. Right? We're all trying to get that exposure from the next door neighbor and their friends and the other neighbor right next to them. Like we want to make sure that they know us, know about us. The reason why we throw in our uh, billboards and mailers and yeah. farm and do all this stuff right so like this is what we're looking for so i feel like if you identify a niche and you can really hone in on that and just relate to them they will listen to you a lot more so and that really niche say, doesn't hey, have to be about it. and also i'm a realtor okay you know like they're yeah big time they're gonna listen to you a lot more awesome so i think influence is huge and it, it, just to be clear, the influence doesn't have to be around selling homes, right? Like if I wanted to be someone who just painted picture of rubber ducks, like if that went viral, it doesn't matter. It's a niche. I'm just serving to that niche is the way that you look at it, right? That's it. Okay. It will relate to you a lot more. They'll, it's going to be a warm conversation as opposed to a cold one. Exactly. You have something to talk to besides um, uh, real estate and just to sell. Yeah. Okay. No, I like that answer a lot. And then last one for you, Ed. Um, this place has a special place in my heart. Truth or trend, New York City. What's going on with that market? Is this going to be still the number one city in the world over the next 10 years? Or is it kind of trending out? I'm so curious. It's man. still the number one city. Let's go. Let's go. It's, it's the number one city. And New York is not going away. It has such a name. It has such a reputation. People from all over the world want to go see it. Mm -hmm. It's just like the Eiffel Tower. Like that yep. thing is not going away anytime soon. But those that are there, they're probably like, oh, we're done with this. Yeah. But like 
people in New York were like, holy crap, I was multi sea level tower one day. Yeah. Like that feeling I don't think will ever go away. Um, wow. Rome and, you know, the Caesar Palace, and then you have Greece, and you have, uh, you have, these are just such landmarks that I don't think are ever going to vanish anytime soon. Yeah. Unless some sort of huge catastrophe happens, then yeah, sure, maybe. But like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even consider this pandemic as a catastrophe, a catastrophe for what happened to, to uh, New York. Yeah. I think it was just an ev- evolution that New York had to go through. Mm, that's a real fresh perspective. I like that, Ed. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love this conversation. Um, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, I want to stay connected. I'll be up in, you know, Northern Jersey, you know, with, with, you know, in the next couple of weeks and whatnot. So we'd love to get coffee or something like that. Maybe we'll, we'll chop it up, make a, one of those TikToks where we point like that or something. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, last question for you, Ed. Um, if you had to say, you know, why is it at this stage, you know, we, you, we came into the podcast, you said, I got into real estate for the money, the looks, you know, what it could do for me. Five, 10 years from now, you know, the vision that you have for your expansion, you know, locations, your team, your brand. Why is it, why is it that you do what you do currently? If, if you could say from the most fresh perspective, why is it that you work so hard on your brand? Why is it that you work so hard on your team, your mission? You know, why is it that you work so much and you're so invested inside of this career? I love teaching, entertaining, and changing lives for the better. And knowing that when someone comes to me and says, Ed, thank you for helping me get to where I am today. And thank you for helping me make more. Thank you for helping me get more exposure. Thank you for helping me create a brand. I love what I do now. I love that I'm not just trying to sell real estate, but I'm also trying to grow my brand and people love it and people mm-hmm. compliment me on it. Like, because of you, you made me start that. That tickles me in the right way. Like, I love that. Like, that just motivates me. Yeah. It uh, makes me happy. That makes me, like, hungry. And then, you know, and then I tell my family about it and they're proud of me and they're happy. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, that's just more of an injection to want to do what I'm doing. So, you know, I just, my goal from day one when I said, I'm going to start growing my social media so I can start growing the following worldwide. It's, and then I got into real estate. It was when I got into real estate six years ago. I said, I'm going to use all my social media knowledge I've gained and help evolve and improve the marketing and branding of real estate. Since that day, I've been doing nothing but trying to do that. Mm. And I'm seeing real estate agents worldwide now change their social media strategies. So I'm seeing them brand themselves, seeing them not just try to sell but more so trying to grow that local celebrity ambiance around them and have people know, like, okay, that's the person to go to. But, like, I made that happen. That's so cool. I love that. That's awesome, man. Yo, I, I love to hear that, Ed. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that you'll continue to chase that feeling and, and receive that feeling from helping other people. I'm so excited to, you know, stay up to date with everything that you're doing. Um, and like I said, uh, we will link up sometime in North Jersey coffee's on me. Uh, would love to connect, man. <laughs> I would love to do so. Thanks for having me on. Awesome, man. Great seeing you. Um, and we'll chat soon. Thank you everyone for watching. On a road, here we go, here we go.